When my sister was about nine years old, the teacher gave her a desk that didn't fit. Or at least it didn't fit according to my sister, who likes to swing her legs like a hurricane while she's working. And she explained the problem to the teacher, who didn't really do much. And my sister came home in tears of rage. And so my dad did what the father of any crying nine-year-old would do. He pulled out his copy of the book On Civil Disobedience by Henry David Thoreau. And so the next morning, my determined sister headed out to school armed with the conviction that authority can have no power over a person or property except that which he concedes. And she headed over to her desk and she laid her work out on her chair, sat down on the floor, began working, and informed her teacher that she was on desk strike. The teacher told her to cut it out. Then the teacher tried to reason with her. Eventually the teacher sent her to the principal. And the principal decided that the smartest thing to do was just give tiny Henry a new desk. And so my sister flew home on the wings of a dawning sense of her own power. I thought about this story years later when I was new to Unitarian Universalism. I was so excited to find UUism. I love church and community and I'm also pretty much an atheist so I didn't know there was an option for me and when I realized there was, I dove into church leadership. And I was pretty good at it too. My work on the membership committee drew such attention from leadership that I was made chair by my second meeting, which clearly meant I was nailing it. I was attending board meetings within a year. I would go with my friend Anne, and afterwards we would have a second meeting where we would have a debrief on the spiritual practice that was church leadership in the parking lot of the Dairy Queen. And usually those meetings were a flurry of co-conspiratorial joy and ideas and occasionally they were not so much. Because not everybody understood my clear talent for church leadership. Sometimes they didn't listen to everything I had to say. Sometimes I felt like there wasn't space for me or like we weren't adhering to our covenant that we agreed to or sometimes other people were just wrong. And when that would happen, when we were dealing with conflicts as a board that were so big that I felt like my church was on fire around me. Anne and I would just sit and cry together. For days later, I would think about those meetings. I would think of all the things I should have said. I would compose emails that I was never going to send. And I would try to digest the pain of it. And then one night in the parking lot, Anne said something to me that I will never forget. Everyone thinks they join a church with the membership ceremony, Anne said. You know that moment where the minister says a few words and they give you a flower and you sign a book and it's very nice. But there's this other moment, months or sometimes even years later. There's this moment when you're fed up. When someone says something horrible or does something horrible and everybody just stands there like it's fine. And you realize this isn't the place you thought it was and these are not the people that you thought they were. That moment, Anne told me, is your re-membership moment. That moment when you decide if you're really in this. When you realize it's not what you expected and you have to decide if that's a reason to leave, which sometimes it is. But sometimes it's a reason to build. A reason to claim this space that is your home. A reason to fight for it. And more than that, be peaceful for it too listen to it and love it and just sit with it while it grows. I think of remembership whenever I feel like there's not room for me in my spiritual communities. Still happens, by the way. And when I do think of remembership, I think about my sister. Not stuffing it and squeezing into a space that didn't fit, but also not storming out, not slamming the door behind her, not breaking things. Because there is a third option, and that is to hold your ground. Insist that the circle expand. Make a space for yourself at the table or adjacent to the table or wherever it is that actually fits you. When I think about remembership, I think about my sister sitting down beside her desk, laying out her papers, and getting to work.
interested in using this video in a worship service, we have got you covered. Check out the link in the description for a link to an easily downloadable version of the video, the text, some really good information for you musicians about how to transition from that story into a really good hymn that goes with it really well. So that's all below. That's all free of charge. All of our videos are free of charge for as long as we are able to make them using donations from congregations and individuals that are able to. And if that might be you, there's also information about a donation, which is non-mandatory, which is also in the description. Lastly, like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel in the algorithm and also slightly increase the chances that you'll see our new videos when they come out. That's more of like a aspirational leap of faith kind of thing at this point because of the way the algorithm works. If you want to actually make sure that you see our materials when they come out, you can also check out the link in the description for our mailing list. We mail only rarely and only when we have something important and useful to say. And I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is the UU Funding Program, who didn't exactly sponsor us on purpose, but I cannot resist telling you about them. The UU Funding Program has been incredibly generous with Birth and Dignity and the UU Hysterical Society over the years, and has offered us grants that have allowed us to do incredible things. If you are a Unitarian Universalist or someone within a Unitarian Universalist organization who has a really neat idea, the people at the Funding Program are incredibly encouraging the process and paperwork and things are not intimidating at all and they'll work with you to help you flesh out your idea and your application. Seriously, if you are a UU with a really exciting and transformative idea but just don't quite have the financial means, check out the UU funding program. I cannot say enough good things about working with them.